We see a lot of plastic in our daily lives, so much so that most of us don't really give it a second thought. Well, at Ancare, we want you to think about plastic. Face it, you spend a good portion of your annual budget on plastic cages and bottles, and you don't get much bang for your buck if you're throwing them away. The most economical way to use any plastic item is to ensure that it lasts as long as possible. This is a brief overview of plastics available to the lab animal industry. We'll touch on their durability, autoclavability, and overall strengths of these tremendously resilient polymers. Polypropylene was the first plastic available to our industry. At Adancare, we use it to make both cages and some bottles, and this is some amazing plastic. Strong, durable, and autoclavable to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, it does have two shortcomings that have allowed it to be less favorable in recent years. First, it's fairly soft. It can become pliable at higher temperatures, and there's a chance that it could get bent out of shape. Still, the low cost and high durability is often enough to overcome this issue. Unfortunately, cost and strength don't help the fact that you can't see through it. Fortunately, there was another choice. Polycarbonate was developed in 1953 virtually simultaneously in both the United States and Germany, and it gained popularity for a couple of very important reasons. It can take the heat, and it's clear. In Pittsfield, Massachusetts, General Electric scientist Daniel W. Fox inadvertently discovered polycarbonate while working on a wire coating material. According to accounts, the concoction he was working on had thickened so much that it could no longer be stirred. He left for home so it could cool overnight. When he returned the following day, he found that the compound had set into a hard, transparent material. That marked the beginning of Lexan polycarbonate. Meanwhile in Germany, Hermann Schnell discovered polycarbonate at Bayer's main lab in Erding. The main difference between Fox's accidental discovery and Schnell's is that Schnell was trying to produce a synthetic plastic, and the macrolong polycarbonate he developed was exactly what he had intended. Both companies began to commercially produce polycarbonate in 1958, and its popularity as a material for laboratory animal bottles and cages gained momentum throughout the 70s and 80s. Then came the days of the autoclave. Even though polycarbonate is autoclavable to a temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit, prolonged and repeated autoclavings may cause it to fail. Why? Well, in order to understand that, it helps to have a basic understanding of how polycarbonate is made. Essentially, a bunch of chemicals, one of them being sodium hydroxide, are mixed together. The results are, among other things, water, heat, and polycarbonate. The polycarbonate can then be molded into whatever items are desired, and under normal conditions, they will last for years. When autoclaved, the objects are being placed into a pressurized chamber with heat, water, and often sodium hydroxide or other alkaline chemicals. Essentially, this forces the reversal of the original process. The polycarbonate breaks down into its original constituents, and cracking, crazing, and whitening may occur. The plastic becomes brittle and breaks. Obviously, the heat, pressure, and water cannot be avoided when autoclaving. Therefore, it's the alkaline chemicals that are problematic. Just where do these alkaline chemicals come from? Well, there are several culprits. Detergent residue. Several detergents are alkaline in nature, and if these are not properly rinsed, a film can form over the plastic items and carry these chemicals into the autoclave. It's of paramount importance that your wash equipment is properly maintained. Wash chemicals need to be administered in the proper concentrations, and whenever possible, acidic detergents should be used. Hard water. The minerals that cause hard water, such as sodium, magnesium, potassium, and so forth, can precipitate out during the final rinse in your cage washer. They can form a thin mineral coating on all your items. When autoclaved, these minerals oxidize with the steam to form their alkalines, such as sodium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, and potassium hydroxide. Amines in steam. Carbonic acid can form in after boiler steam lines. In large institutions where the steam may need to travel long miles of pipe before reaching the autoclave, this can be particularly troublesome. Amines are alkaline chemicals that are added to the steam water to raise the pH and protect the pipe. Polyphthalate carbonate, more commonly known as high temp polycarbonate, is better suited to the overall autoclave environment and gained popularity throughout the 1990s. It's autoclavable to 270 degrees Fahrenheit but more important is its increased resistance to alkaline chemicals. It can be differentiated from regular temp polycarbonate by its slight yellow tint, more easily viewed through the edge of the material. And this stuff is strong. Really strong. Really, really strong. As a matter of fact, it's every bit as strong as regular polycarbonate with increased chemical resistance.
still, dependent on the facility, amine type, concentrations, detergents, water conditions, and other factors, even this tremendously resistant plastic can sometimes fail. But there are other options. Polycellphone can be identified by its slight copper tinge, again more easily viewed when looking through an edge. Made in a similar fashion to polycarbonate and high temp, polycellphone is considerably more resistant to alkaline chemicals than even high temp. And this stuff is strong. Really strong. But not really, really strong. Polycellphone is weaker in both tensile strength and impact resistance than high temp, and although it will withstand alkaline conditions, it can fall victim to other pitfalls. Okay, we expected it to break too, but that's Ankare's molding technology for you, and the subject of another video. Those four are the primary plastics used in the lab animal industry. Polypropylene is extremely durable, autoclavable to 250 degrees, inexpensive, and opaque. Polycarbonate is clear, strong, and autoclavable to 250 degrees. High temp has a slight yellow tint, autoclavable to 270, and more resistant to the alkaline conditions of the autoclave. Polycellphone or UDEL is even more resistant than high temp, but not as strong. A good rule of thumb is that if you find your cages and bottles are not lasting at least three years, you should consider moving up a level in resistance. There are a few other plastics that are occasionally used for specific applications. These would be plastics such as polyphenol cell phone, known by the trade name Raydel. It's more resistant than polycell phone, just as strong as high temp, and very expensive. It does end up being cost prohibitive for cages, but can be used effectively on smaller items, such as Ankare's screw caps. Sometimes though, you don't want things to last forever. Polystyrene is an ideal plastic for single use or limited use applications. Cage washable, it's great for use as a disposable cage for transport, radio labeled studies, or temporary housing during shutdowns of your wash facility. It can be used, washed, and reused, and then disposed of or incinerated when done. Hopefully this brief overview has given you a clearer view of lab animal plastics. If you're still not certain which plastic cages or bottles will best suit your needs, contact your Ancare representative.